Today, we're talking to Dave Selinger, co-founder and CEO at Deep Sentinel, about how AI is radically improving smart security. You're listening to Joel Beasley, Modern CTO. So we were approached by your PR person, and they were telling us about Deep Sentinel. And I thought that was pretty interesting. Can you tell the audience what, what the company does? Deep Sentinel is the most interesting company you're going to learn about on this podcast ever, period, full stop. And, and, and I'm not saying that just because I, I happen to be the CEO and founder, but it really is an amazing company, right? And it's something that touches all of us. It's in the physical security space, as the name might suggest. And, uh, it, and it stops crimes. And what is ridiculous to me, and the reason I think it's so interesting is because it, I built Deep Sentinel because the entire United States has been lulled into a state of idiocy by the solutions that are available right now. And, and idiocy is a term that I, I think is absolutely correct. I apologize to anybody who got their feelings hurt in the last 10 seconds, but like, I, I, here's my story is my neighbor had a home invasion. I'm an engineer. So I, of course, run the neighborhood watch and made sure everybody has cameras and alarms and everything like that. She has a home invasion. So we have the police come and the, the police are there and we say, Hey, we, we have an alarm. We have all this video footage. Why don't, why haven't you solved the crime? Why did this happen? How did this happen? And the police officer looks over at me and he's like, you're the tech dude. What did you expect the alarm to do? It wasn't armed. She was home. What did you expect the cameras to do? Like jump out and stop this crime? You don't realize that a hundred percent of the crime fighting tools that you have available to you do absolutely nothing to fight crime. They do nothing to solve the only problem that matters to you as the buyer, the business owner or homeowner. So I built Deep Sentinel to take the available technology, push it forward a couple of steps and stop crime. So like when you come to my house, you step onto the driveway, there's cameras that are streaming your video to an AI within about a half a second. That AI can determine suspicious activity in under a tenth of a second. And then a live guard is told what's going on in the situation, what the scenario is, and, and the severity of the situation, whether they should intervene. Intervene by talking to the person, intervene by yelling at the person, intervene by calling the police. And we even have some, you know, kind of more controversial products like uh, pepper spray, smoke, strobes. Let's do it. Things like yeah. that. How is that controversial? If it was like maybe 50 cal bullet would be overkill. Because you only need like nine millimeters. Yeah, I was going to say like, but, yeah. because you go with a nine millimeter, <laughs> even just a 22, right? Like it, it's just so that you hobble away. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it, it is a, those are regulated responses is, is why it's a little bit controversial. And, and people have told me like they do about everything that I do that you can't do that, which is, I think the best motivator to get me to try to go. Make it happen. It is, it is my key button in life. Yeah. So it's like, you're an idiot. That's never going to work. I'm like, well, now it's got it. Yeah. Now. Wow. You pushed the big red button. You could have pushed any yeah. of these other buttons. We would have been fine. But now you're in yeah. control of my life and I have to go do that. So it stops crime. So one of the methods is the live guard. There's a speaker system. So they could be like, hey, don't yep. do that, porch pirate or whatever. And then you can, as the homeowner, can I scale it up? Like, can I get pepper spray AI tools at my home through you? You cannot get pepper spray at your home right now. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I think the best way to describe this would be a specific example. So almost exactly a year ago, this, the second week of September in 2023, I had a man come to my house armed with a crossbow of all weapons uh, with the intent of breaking in and stealing stuff. With a crossbow? Uh, with a crossbow. Uh, if, if you if you don't believe me, you can Google it. No, I have I'm... video. Like it's. I didn't believe it. But let me just put it that way. So I wake up to my daughter running in my room, screaming that Deep Sentinel has set off the siren outside, and I'm I'm sound asleep. So I like okay, maybe she's overreacting. So I go outside and I t go to my cameras and I talk to my cameras. And my guard says, no, the police are on the way. Go back inside, sir. And this is a real situation. So I immediately, like, now I'm freaking out. I go inside. I go back and I look. And there, sure enough, there was a guy with on a bike with a, a crossbow, pulls up to my driveway, walks down my driveway, 
the AI detects suspicious behavior. The AI played an automated. Yeah, there you go. Is There's, this it? Th- oh, this it. is your video, dude. This went viral. I saw this on my own social. This is this is legit my house, and I don't always have trash in front of my house. So like that's that's horse jumps from my daughter. You can see that's the crossbow right. right there. You're a founder. Times are tough. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, okay. there's me yeah so that that's thank, thank you uh that was legitimately what happened uh at my house so there was a guy he ended up stealing some stuff off of that table you heard the ai trigger and, oh the and alarm the guy to went go. off before he even like really did much yep and then that's brilliant and the guards are yelling at him telling him to go and the police are deployed so and, and the 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 thing that a lot of people ask about is, tell me about this, the the police dispatch. I'll tell you the big secret in Deep Sentinel is that 99% of the time we don't have to dispatch police because most of the time criminals don't want to get caught. They don't want to know that they're going to get in trouble. Whether that's a petty crime, I just don't want to be bothered, or it's a serious crime and I definitely don't want to go to prison. So that, that said though, so 99% of the time, the sirens, the strobes, the guards are enough. But when we do call the police, Hey, I've got an armed male with a crossbow and coming to a residential home that has people inside that are scared for their safety. I challenge you to find a police officer that does not know how to prioritize that call. And so we get super fast police response. We get consistent response. We get the right response. They are able to identify the right suspect. They're able to to execute correctly. That is amazing. That is so cool. How many other people are doing this? Zero. That's so weird. So that's yeah. that's where, you know, again, when you say like, tell me like what you guys do, we're literally the only company in the world that does that. So I just got a new system two years ago. So we moved out to a little seven acre farm outside of Nashville. And when I was shopping the systems, I was just so disappointed. I literally told my wife, I was like, if I wasn't in the middle of my business right now, I would go start a business to solve this. <laughs> because the option, it was so garbage in like the resolution and what yep. you could see. And then just the feature set was not there. It was like stuck in the 80s. Mm-hmm. Yes, it had like 4K video and that was the quality. So that was okay. But as far as what I could do with it, the scrubbing, trying to like watch yep. back stuff, it was so archaic and old. And then at the end of the day, it's like, what is it actually going to do? Yeah. I mean, Joel, Uh, let's even like, let's, let's take that to the next step the the thinking process that I went through, which is, all right, what's the difference between a 4k and a 260p or 180p video? And let's say you could scrub it. You still have now a 4k scrubbed video of some guy stealing all this stuff from your house, breaking in, scaring the crap out of your family. It's, right. it's, it's only, even if you do all of those technology uh, innovations by themselves, you're still only, you know, just scratching the surface of the problem, which is why I just said, I'm, I'm done. Like, I'm not going to even worry about the, the resolution of the camera. I personally, for my home, I would rather have a, a 1K camera with a live guard than yeah. an 8K camera with not a live guard, period, full stop, easy peasy. Because what I care about is stopping crimes. I don't care about having an awesome video that I can search. All right, here's be like Elon Musk here. Here's what I want in Tennessee. Uh, <laughs> you know, he does all the cool things to his products. I want to be able to put in like Tennessee mode. And then when it notif- when it sees it, no alarms go off, nothing. It just sends me a text that says, it's hunting time. <laughs> and, and, and that's it. That's it. That's all I need. <laughs> <laughs> We'll call it, we'll call it Joel's Tennessee mode specifically, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Or I could choose the music that plays to the, uh, to the person. <laughs> yeah. That'd be good. You know, our, our goal is to, to do something good for society. So we, Phil you know, Collins we- would be good for society. I can see it come. And, that, and then the guy's just like creeped out. And Bose is involved with a sponsorship deal. We could, it could, it could go big. I, you know, I, I will, I'll think a lot about this, but your, your example <laughs> reminds me of one of my favorite movies I watched with my daughter called, uh, Tucker and Dale say, uh, versus evil. Have you ever seen that? No, it's a horrible, 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 horrible movie. And it's so rad. Uh, it's about these two, uh, backwoods guys that, um, that, that accidentally have all these 
you know, un, un, unaliving events with all their neighbors. Um, but just, just to be, to be very, very serious though, like deep Sentinel's goal is to prevent people from having to be in that situation because, uh, no matter how prepared you are, uh, for one of those situations, our goal is to, to just not be in it, not be in a situation where there's an escalation of a level of force where you or a peace officer or, or a criminal, um, are exposed to that because, uh, that's, I think there's too much of that in society. There's too much of, of those types of situations. Things are getting way too escalated instead of getting de-escalated. So while we do have a lot of, of folks that, that own weapons, the way that they tend to think about it is just like you said, I want early notice. If I am going to have to use lethal force, I need to be prepared. If I'm going to have to use lethal force and I have somebody who's chosen to, to approach my property uh, with that level of escalation, I want to be as early as possible. I want to distract them as much as possible. And I want to be in the strongest situation and, and control the, uh, the environment as much as possible. And so, um, you know, it, it, it is kind of funny, but when we do, we see guns every day. We see things that are, that are at that level of escalation every day. And I, I think one of the things that I'm, I'm really proud of is almost all the time we're able to deescalate it and remove the threat of life from the situation. Is it smart enough to know if I walk out with my, I have a shooting, shooting range on my farm. If I walk out the front door with my shotgun, is it smart enough to know that it's me or will it just. Are you going to have that beard or are you going to shave the beard? Mm -hmm. The beard's going to stay. So the beards, beards are problems. Um, Beards are problems. Yeah. But, uh, but no, no, I, I, it is. And a big part of that is the way that we respond. And so in that particular case, you have an armed person coming up, taking something. They know that it's not me or anyone in my family. It's two o'clock in the morning. And so it's able to look at the the totality of that situation and know the right response is immediate escalation. And in a situation where you've got a, a firing range, we've seen you numerous times going out. Your behavior does not suggest that you're running for cover. Then we would respond accordingly. Interesting. This is so cool. I'm so glad that this exists now do you have drones that can chase the burglars that was actually the very first thing that i built at this company we have not deployed it i want to um but again i mean just from a practical standpoint i also really really want to make money and so the the thing that is the most effective and the most cost effective for our customers is not the drones it's just it's that really decent two-way audio and the stationary uh, like I'm telling you, tools. yeah, the idea, like for me, what would cause me, it would be even cooler if your stuff could exist with existing systems, right? Like if you could just hook into my real link and I just pay us you a subscription fee so I don't have to go like reinstall all my cameras. That would be Yeah, so we do. We, we uh, for a lot of the, the wired camera systems out there, we're able to take over those systems and then add this service on top. Wow, that is fascinating. Uh, do you have, other than your personal story have you guys been able to like clip and create any type of reels from customers if they've given you permission to kind of show you stopping stuff yeah so that that uh that video that you just showed a little bit ago that's actually the name of that video series it's called our stopped series and we produce a compendium of some of our more interesting crime stops from the past week we used to do it every week uh it's it's a lot of work to produce those to kind of put that in context, we stop about 45,000 suspicious events a year, about 45,000 crimes or potential crimes a year. And so going through on a weekly basis, the 1,000 <laughs> interventions that we do, it's a lot of work. And, uh, and so uh, we, we've kind of tailored that down to, or tailed that down to about once every two, three weeks. But yeah, if you go to our YouTube channel, it's youtube.com slash deep sentinel, you will see dozens and dozens, hundreds, in fact, of videos of us stopping various types of crimes, everything from armed hostage taking to what? Uh, just little trespass to vandalism to people try to break in with a, a, a crowbar to sexual assault. I mean, we stop everything. It's it's what we do is it's rad for me personally, not, not, not financially, not professionally. Like 
I love what we do. Like the fact that we make people actually stop committing crimes makes the world a little bit safer. And I, it, you know, this is a little bit personal for me, but I had the opportunity to retire and not start another company or do anything more. And I decided that I wanted to start another company and I wanted to have it be something more than just for profit. I'd, I've always been on the boards of between three and five nonprofits for the last 20 years. But I wanted to make sure that the, the business that I started was good enough for the world that I didn't need to be on any nonprofits. I didn't need to be involved in any nonprofits because it was a for-profit that was built for scale, built to actually make the world a better place. And so the fact that we do all those things, like I, I, I kind of jokingly say it's super and it's important to me, but it, but it really, really is. And, you know, we were talking about my daughters just a second ago. I started this business with them and, and not like, hey, ha, 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 you know, as a family, but like literally sitting at our kitchen table talking about, okay, daddy's going to start a new business and, and I want it to look like this. Do you guys want to make the first logo? What's important that we do? What are the services that it, it's important to you guys to make sure that we provide safety to this class of business or this class of people and, and we do it in this particular way? And the ability to kind of bring my whole family into that has been absolutely critical for me. That is amazing. How have you taught your kids about giving back? You said that you're a charitable person. You just described all of that. But I'm a, I'm a dad. I've got three under the age of seven, one girl, two boys. And we, m my wife and I already bought them the cash flow board game, teaching them the finances. Uh, and, you know, we teach them about like what we give back from our income. But like, how do you how do you do it? How did you instill those values into your kids? So I don't think we did a great job, but we're, we're continuing to work on this. I'll tell you what we did though. Um, so starting about eight years ago, nine years ago, we got our kids onto a, an allowance split system. We use one called Greenlight, which is an automated app. And so as they get their allowance, automatically 20% of it goes to savings. I think 40% of it goes for their fund spending. And then the remainder goes to giving. And once every six months or a year, we sit down as a family and we talk about what, what are the, the causes that we want to give to as a family. And the, the agreement essentially is if you guys decide on one together and you really, really kind of come up with a reason and a purpose behind that, then mom and dad will match it and we'll put a ton more in behind that. And so it gives them a sense of independence, but also kind of like a little bit of gamesmanship, right? I mean, that's, this is, this is one of those dynamics that, okay, so I'm not just doing this in isolation. This isn't just my money. It might be my money plus these, this money. And, uh, and then we go through different things that are meaningful to them. We happen to be dog owners. We love animals. We have oh, nice. four dogs, a bunny, three horses, um, 75 fish, uh, just all kinds of animals everywhere, thousands of frogs. And so one of the ones that we always talk about is, do we want to give to the local animal shelter? And we, we, I would say in the last two years, I think we've given to that animal shelter twice. So out of the four times that we sat down, it ended up being the animal shelter. So that one always ends up being there. But then you Think about like globally, right? So one of the things that I did early in my career was I built a lot of schools and orphanages in developing countries in Africa and in Central America. And as, and as great and as, uh, you know, self-sacrificial as that may seem, it was actually a very stressful initiative for me because I found that being the American, the Westerner on a plane, bringing money over, not, not only does it feel good when you are able to accomplish something, but it also creates this kind of secondary effect of codependency where there's an expectation that I'm going to continue to support this for every one of its problems going forward instead of a self-sufficiency. And so we talk about things like that. And then we talk about, do we want to find somebody who's tried to solve that and give our money to them globally? Do we want to be domestic and so all over the U.S., like the American Cancer Society is one that we donate to right now. Uh, childhood cancer, we have three or four friends right now who are battling childhood cancer, so that's one that we donated to most recently. Um, and then 
we'll look at, again, just local animal shelters and our local homeless shelter. Uh, one of the things that I would recommend to parents is that soup kitchens are overwhelmed between December 5th and January 10th, and then massively understaffed for the rest of the year because everybody wants to teach their kids about giving during Christmas. But if you really want to teach your kids about giving, just do it anytime other than Christmas. And that's what they really need. You heard it first, your public service announcement. From that, David. Yeah, PSA <laughs> right here. Yeah. If you, you would like go, to serve the country, the way to do so. Yeah. Pumpkin spice season, not Santa season. Oh, um, so. stop. Okay, you pumpkin might. spice, that's a, that's a no-go word at my family. That's, you're not allowed to eat pumpkin spice in the Selinger household. No, my kids love pumpkin spice and I hate everything that pumpkin spice stands for, right? I mean, it's, it's August, right? And they just started serving pumpkin spice. So it's, we are solidly four months from Christmas. It's a little early for pumpkin spice. Well, I was just looking at the notes real quick. You're, you also were the co-founder of Redfin? Oh yeah, yeah, that too. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I was, was in the Amazon. real estate space for a while. Um, about 15 years ago. So I saw Redfin come about. I love Redfin. I mean, I love real yeah. estate. I still love real estate to this day. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I was at Amazon and I was looking at, at uh, buying a house in, in Seattle. And I'm going to say this really frankly because I think that's the only way to communicate with people. But I would also say it with an, an apology and, and with, with all respect due to the, to the real estate agents that take their profession seriously. But I hired one that didn't. I hired a guy that had no education and no knowledge, no knowledge about records or values or comps beyond the 25 minute YouTube video that he had watched before having a meeting with me. And I was sitting there with my, my buddy, Russell, who also worked with me at, at Amazon. And we're sitting there expecting to have a conversation with an expert. And instead we're having a conversation with somebody who is clearly less educated than we are in a space in which we are not educated at all. And he's telling us, oh no, this, this, you know, these prices are normal. This is going to go up. This is, this is a, a great location because it's up and coming. And it turns out we go with him to this location. It's a, it's a meth lab. It's a, it's a super fun zone that needs to be burnt to the ground and never used again. And that was just, <laughs> just this stark experience. And so after that, I decided real estate is a space that could really, really use some, uh, you know, media through the internet to figure out what, what is this property really like use mapping to figure out what are the, the comparables and is that really a good price? And so we built Redfin, we built Redfin to be the very first interactive digital digital mapping application that, uh, that was worldwide. And it was an amazing experience. Uh, a lot of people don't know that about Redfin, that Redfin predated Google Maps. Redfin predated any sort of interactive mapping. And we built the very, very first interactive mapping application uh, in the world. Oh, really? Yeah, that, that didn't come up on my... For some reason, I thought Redfin came about in uh, 2007 or eight. It was way yeah, before so that. Google Google Maps was actually built using Redfin as the prototype. Oh, really? Yeah. So wait, when did you found Redfin? 2002, 2003. Oh, so I just I was just late to the party. I yeah. just didn't pick up on you guys until Yeah, so when like we 07. launched, um I remember the day that we launched because it was, you know, like like all technology things, it was down to the last minute, it was super hard. And so I was up to like three in the morning, finishing everything up. And then I'm like, you know, you, the, the big push enter, which is always dramatic in movies, but it's actually like, okay, enter, I'm going to bed. Right. And yeah. so I push enter, I go to bed, I send the email to my co-founders. It's live F off. I never want to see you again. I hate you for the rest of your lives. I'm exhausted. So I go to bed and then I wake up at like seven 30 or eight. It's like four hours of sleep. And I'm just, I've been living on three, four hours of sleep for months at this point. And I'm still working at Amazon. So I got to get up early and head over to Amazon and be smiley, cheery and, and pretend like I, I wasn't up all night working on something else. And so I go to my favorite coffee shop and uh, it's this sh shop called Cafe Ladro. And I get my coffee, which is a, I got a no sugar mocha. 
And I turn around and I realize that more people than usual have their laptops out. In fact, everyone at the coffee shop is like sitting, looking at a laptop together. And so I'm drinking my coffee. And again, I'm still 100% not awake. And I, I, I crap you not, it, true to the T, every single person in the coffee shop had Redfin's website open and was like zooming around all over Seattle looking at web, at uh, properties on the website and just amazed at how fast the map moved and all the information that we were providing, all the past sales, all the comparables. Um, everybody looked at Bill Gates's house. That was like kind of the big thing that everybody eventually did. And there had been an article about us in the INRI, which is the, the real estate news and in the Seattle uh, Times, and it had just exploded. And I went to Starbucks after that. I stopped at Starbucks on the way to work and everybody in Starbucks was doing the same thing. Everybody was blown away. It was one of those, just as a, as a technologist, as a product person, one of those incredibly magical moments where you realize you made something that people really care about. No, oh, it's a beautiful feeling, 100%. Well, I know you have a hard stop, so I want to say thank you so much. And uh, can I buy your systems online? Do you just go into your website or... How does that to work? buy Deep Sentinel, all you have to do is go to www.deepsentinel.com. D E E P S E N T I N E L dot com. I, I feel like I'm going to say for English, press one. <laughs> <laughs> My one of my classmates at uh, at Stanford, her dad was the movie phone guy. And I don't know if you guys are too young to know movie phone, but he was the guy that I said, welcome to movie phone. And dude, like she was so popular. Just just that because I mean, before the Internet, that was. That was movie phone. It was. Oh, rad. I remember. <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, but to, to answer your question seriously, yeah. So, so you can go to our website, www.deepsettle.com. And I highly recommend that if you really are interested in security for the purpose of security, not for checking the box, you really want to take it seriously for your business or for your home, schedule a consultation. We've got people that, that do this for businesses and homes all around the country. We know the different types of businesses. We know the different types of homes and they can help you solve these problems because this is a unique system. It's the only one in the world that stops crime. And so where you put your cameras, how you configure them, all those different things, they're a little bit different. And so if you're really interested, I highly recommend just schedule a consultation. Thank you so much for listening. And if you found this episode useful, please share it with a friend or a colleague who you think would get value from it. And if you have topics that you'd like to hear discussed on the podcast, either add me on LinkedIn or send me an email, joel at moderncto.io. Every time I get an email or LinkedIn message, it absolutely makes my day and inspires me to keep going.